Uh, good morning, everyone. Th thank you, Francis, for your, your kind uh, introduction. And I would like to thank the organizers for, for the invitation to participate in this symposium. And uh, what I will do in this occasion is to share with you what issues on, on sustainability we are uh, discussing in APEC. And in addition to that, what I will do is to, to show so, some information about this waste crisis and and, con and how we could consider a transformation to a circular economy as a response to this waste crisis. And what I would like to show is also some policies that would help us to enable a smooth transition uh, or an adoption to of the, the circular economy. Uh, uh, next slide, please. Uh, in the, uh, in APEC, uh, well, I, I would say uh, we've been discussing about sustainability issues for, for a long while. For example, in, in 2015, during the, uh, the, the Philippines host year, uh, APEC leaders identified that there was a need to do some better waste management and, and call more work in this area. And this, uh, this call also continued in subsequent years. And there have been initiatives, I mean, looking at how, how we could uh, manage waste or how we could control waste. For example, in Chile in 2019, uh, there was a, a lot of discussions uh, about uh, marine debris prevention and reduction of, uh, of debris with a specific focus on plastics. And in that way, APEC endorsed an APEC roadmap on Marie de Bris. Uh, also, in 2020, there was an interest to look at uh, innovative uh, waste management through a circular economy practices. Uh, then later in 2021, uh, well, we were in the middle of a pandemic, but beside the discussions on the pandemic, uh, there were many issues that uh, on environmental matters that took priority. And, and last year, last but not least, uh, uh, the meetings in Thailand, uh, APEC basically uh, promoted a, a new uh, comprehensive framework on a biocircular green economy model. This is with intention to provide guidelines allowing the use of technology and innovation uh, to create value, reduce waste, advance uh, resource efficiency and promote sustainable business models. So uh, you, you can see that in APEC, we, we, are, uh, we notice about the importance of having a regional approach to, to resolve this, uh, to address this waste crisis. And uh, well, next. Uh, so you can see here in this slide that uh, waste generation, is a major problem, uh, and this is uh, worsening by, by the day. Uh, we notice that we have a growing population, uh, and also rapid urbanization, and supported by proper waste, waste management systems that are driving this global waste crisis. So estimations by the World Bank indicate that the just the global solid waste generation will rise by 69% annually, all the way to 3.4 billion tons by 2050. Uh, also, uh, we notice in APEC that in the APEC region, APEC economies are responsible for a large share of global solid waste. So 43% of this global solid waste originated in APEC in 2016. This percentage is going to go down. These are the, 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 the projections, expectations to 37% by 2050. And we can see also that in the APEC region, an APEC economy resident is generating right now around 0.8% of uh, kilo, kilograms of solid waste per day. Uh, and this number is expected to increase to 1.1% 1, 1 kilos per, 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 sorry, 1.1 kilos per day 
by 2050. Uh, next slide, please. So uh, the, 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 the World Bank basically also found that about 59% of waste in every economy was mismanaged. And a, a large proportion of this mismanaged waste, uh, around two thirds of it, uh, arose from developing APEC members. Uh, uh, and we can see that often these mismanaged waste, uh, in particular plastics, uh, uh, is dumped into inland waterways uh, and they all go into oceans. Uh, we, we found a, a study in 2017 that found that uh, about 90% of the ocean's plastic come from 10 rivers, of which six of them come from uh, flow through APEC economies. And all these plastics in the ocean uh, are costing around $1.3 billion per year, affecting tourism, fishing, and shipping, shipping industries. And we also notice that mis mismanaged waste is also deadly because we notice that around 400 thousand to one million residents in developing in developing economies are dying every year due to the harmful effects of mismanaged waste. Okay, next slide, please. A, a proper waste management is definitely a cost-effective strategy to address these issues. So the, the cost, for example, according to some studies uh, in the APEC region, uh, the uh, Basically, the, the mismanaged household waste costs around $375 per ton. But implementing a, a, a integrated waste management system could cost only between $50 to $100 per ton. So it's more economical. And, and, and you know, a waste is not supportive of a future economic growth. A, a, and, and since resources, a, resource security and efficiency are, are important for economic resilience. A, and so this is also supported by efforts, for example, at the United Nations, the Sustainable Development Goals also identify the importance of reducing waste and pollutants in ensuring that the needs of future generations are met. The next slide, please. So uh, you can see that transition into a circular economy can help. So uh, the, the, the direct impact on waste on livelihoods is self-evident, but the, the waste we throw away is also coming around. Uh, and that includes food. For example, if we discard a plastic bottle uh, and this plastic bottle ends up you know, in one of these garbage patches in, in the Pacific Ocean, uh, this could be consumed by, by, by some fish and, and it could eventually enter into the human food uh, system. Also, uh, economies, firms, households are all often, uh, we notice that uh, they are practicing often a, a linear model of product, product that follows a take, make and dispose pattern. So we, we, we have to, 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 to change this. So the, the, the circular econo economy model, on the other hand, ensures that almost uh, no residual waste is released into the, the environment. And this could be achieved through, for example, long lasting design, maintenance, repair, reuse, remanufacturing, refurbishing, and, and, and recycling. And next slide, please. So uh, you can see here a, a, a sort of um, extensive uh, a, a framework uh, for the, the, the circular economy. It involves 10 stages. So some of these stages are about uh, producing in a smarter way, uh, for example, by, by practicing uh, refuse in a way that we, we could avoid the use of raw uh, materials by abandoning the function of a product, for example, to avoid packaging where, where possible. 
also we, we could implement the rethink strategy by make the use of a product more intensive. For example, the shared use of products like vehicles, washing machines. We could also uh, implement a reduced strategy, which is basically to consume less raw materials or increase product, uh, if, uh, increase a production efficiency. For example, to buy fewer consumer products. Uh, in terms of uh, uh, other strategies, uh, the circular economy also involves to extend the life lifespan of, of products and their parts. For example, in terms of reuse, reusing, uh, we could use discarded products which are still in good condition and, ful uh, and fulfill their original function. For example, to buy secondhand goods. We could also uh, uh, repair defective products. We can also refurbish or redesign, restore old products. Uh, we can remanufacture a, a, a products by basically reusing functional discarded parts to manufacture a new products with the same function. And we can also repurpose a, a products by reusing functional a, discarded parts to manufacture a, a, a new product a, with a different function. A, and we can also do a recycling and we can also uh, uh, do some recovering, for example, by incinerating le leftover materials and recover energy. Uh, next slide, please. So yeah, just to, to keep it short, we can see that the transformation of this into a circular economy uh, would bring certain benefits. For example, we would, uh, the, the, the first one is that an economy or a region would be, become less dependent on external sources of raw materials. The second advantage of, of a circular economy is that the generation of new types of, um, uh, we have the generation of new types of employment and businesses. So uh, more or less, uh, we notice that uh, the circular economy could create 1.5 million jobs in Asia for the next 25 years. And the third major benefit of the circular economy lies in the potential reduction in environmental degradation. But despite all these benefits, there are also barriers to set up a circular economy. We have high upfront costs that are expected in the in the short in the short run. Uh, also, uh, the, the circular economy would lead to more complex international supply chains, since uh, well, resources will, will flow in, in, in both directions. Also, the transition to a circular economy requires the, the sharing of smart infrastructure and, and, and advanced technologies. And, and that's often hindered by weak intellectual property rights and data privacy concerns, among others. And finally, uh, the profitability of the circular economy requires a strong demand from consumers. And this only arises if people are well informed about the concept, they can recognize the business circularity. Uh, and, uh, and so they, uh, uh, they, there's more work that we need to do about raising awareness about, about, about these benefits. So the circular, next slide, please. The circular economy presents a lot of opportunities in terms of we can share platforms to facilitate access uh, to and, uh, and share use of under underutilized products. Uh, we could also use a product as a service instead of a product itself. We can also uh, 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 do more recycling. We can do some product life extension. And we can, you know, uh, uh, do some resource recovery so we can capture byproducts and waste in manufacturing such that they can be used in other production processes. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, well, uh, for the, the, the sake of time, I will I'll, 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 I'll jump this, this one. Next slide, please. Uh, next slide. So in the... In, May, in APEC, basically, we, we have 
implemented this initiative called the Biocircular Economy Model. And basically, we are trying to find ways to connect the, the, the environment and the, and the society. And, and in this way, uh, we, are, we are identifying uh, four areas to address all environmental challenges, such as climate change, extreme weather, natural disasters, progressing sustainable and inclusive trade and investment, promoting environmental conservation, sustainable use and management of natu natural resources, and to advance resource efficiency and sustainable waste uh, management. Well, uh, my, uh, I've been asked to, to, to keep it short, to stop here. So my, my, my deepest apologies, I could not share more, more materials. Uh, also, my apologies, I cannot stay uh, beyond noon because I also have uh, other, other commitments that I had already scheduled. So thanks you so much for, for your attention and, and look forward to participate in future events on this topic in the future. Thank you.